Uh, your next comic, uh, really funny guy, glad you can make it out tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Tran. Set. Yamsi! How do you put it back in? <laughs> What's up, McCormick's? Yeah! Yeah! I didn't even know I was gonna be up yet. <laughs> Just drinking my beer. Oh, man. I'm in like this twilight zone of my life, dude, because like a few months ago, I lost my virginity, and I never thought that was going to happen, because I would always watch like marathons of the 40-year-old virgin, and his name is Andy, and I, I would always think, like, oh my god, this is never going to happen, and it did, and it's like, like no big epiphany like happens to you, you know, you're not like, oh my god, I'm the best person in the world, it's just like, no, like, girls don't matter that much. Or I don't, I don't know, it was just like a weird thing. I don't even know why I'm going with that joke. It's definitely a weird experience. Um, <laughs> hey guys, how are you doing? What's up? Um, I didn't tell my grandfather that, yeah, that I lost my virginity. My grandfather, he's not homophobic, but he's lactose intolerant. So when Harvey Mill got shot in the head, he didn't lose any sleep, but he stopped shitting in his adult diaper. <laughs> nice. Laughs. I like laughs. That's why I do comedy. Man, I'm an English major like Josh, dude. I don't know what am I going to do with the job. I, my mom, she thinks I should be like a Korean movie star. I'm like, Mom, really? Really? I could be in Hollywood or Korea? Like, where are she like... Oh no, you're not that handsome. I'm like, oh, okay. So I was thinking maybe I could do like animation, you know? I could be in uh, like Mulan 3. I could be Andy, the stoner dragon, Andy Murphy's step cousin. I could just like fly around Richmond, just like breathing fire on everybody. And they'd all like die. I don't know, that wouldn't be good. Um, Jokes. I should I should tell some jokes. Why do I keep blinking out? Um, it's so quiet. <laughs> Somebody give me a joke that I could tell. Um, fire truck. Africa. Fire trucks. African fire trucks. Have you ever seen one of those? Me either. I've never been to Africa. You know what's cool though? Like I've had I have black roommates now, and it's awesome because like before, like television would just like warp my mind. I'd be thinking like, oh no, black people in do rags, that's bad. But then I figured out like when black people wear do rags, they're just going to sleep. It's sleepwear. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. I was just trying to like point out like an inconsistency because you know like America like fucks us up and. Everything. Um, all right, I'm gonna get off. <laughs> Andy Tran, ladies and gentlemen. We apparently thought the next comic was really short. All right. <laughs> All right, your next comic, a uh, really funny dude. I like this guy a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Please give it up for Tony Chapman. How's everybody doing tonight? Well, I just want everybody to know that um, Andy Tran, uh, he was actually my roommate. And, and like most roommates, like most roommates, we did actually have sex, but it wasn't like, okay, this is the reason why I don't mess with rice queens anymore, because I mean, you're fucking me, then you're horny like 10 minutes later, and <laughs> just so fucking horny. 
Um, so I'm from Petersburg, Virginia, which is a lovely little resort town like right down the street. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and like many people from Petersburg, I do have a very colorful criminal record. Um, the most recent one coming in college, um, let me just say this, if you went to college and you never got charged for anything, you didn't fucking go to college. So, um, I had to piss really bad, I was drunk, it was 2 a.m. in the morning, we were in the Taco Bell drive-thru. And I see a dark alley, I was like, I'm going to piss this alley. What I didn't realize was I was actually pissing into an open window. Onto a student's laptop computer. Yeah, great times. I'll let everybody finish in the back. Fucking assholes. Shut it! <laughs> but, um, so I actually came out to my parents Friday. Yeah, clap it up. This is a response I actually expected in Richmond because when we were out of the fucking South, so I would more expect you guys to like come and try to tar and feather me than clap. So, thank you for the people that clap. But yeah, they come up to my parents, and they, they actually had a, a really good response. Like, they had a, a, a better response than I thought. Um, they only threw one Bible at me, which was pretty good. And my mom, she started talking about, she was like my baby, I remember you were born, uh, which is a very memorable day for a lot of people. Um, it was the last time she was ever high on medication, uh, and it was also the first time that a baby cried because the doctor did not smack him on the ass. <laughs> And I have a pretty sweet ass in baby. Yeah. What do we have, like, Christians in the audience at the front? Okay. Thanks. No, but I am gay. I'm not, like, femme gay. I'm like, how about them cowboys gay? But, but <laughs> not, like, submissive gay, but, like, prison rape gay. Like... <laughs> I was actually cast as one of the sisters in Shawshank Redemption. You just never saw that scene. Yeah. But, um, hmm. I moved back to this area about two years ago. Um, I was in Hampton Roads for about six years. And I don't fucking like this area because Hampton Roads, I am perfectly, I, I know who the gay people are in Hampton Roads. I moved to Richmond and you have all these fucking art queers and these fucking hipsters and it is just fucking up my gaydar. I don't know where to go next. <laughs> All these dudes are dressing scantily clad <laughs> with skinny jeans. I, I don't understand it. Skinny jeans is like the the anti gaydar. Like I mean it just fucks you up. Like I don't I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Good job, good job. <laughs> and one thing that annoys the hell out of me the most is straight guys. I always, whenever they find out I'm gay, that's always a response like, "Oh shit!" Like I don't. I, it's never direct eye contact, and that shit annoys. It annoys the shit out of me. Like I promise, I will not hit on you. I, I fucking promise, I will not hit on you while you're sober. I fucking promise, I will not make a move until you have passed out. I fucking promise. And then the whole thing. Okay. When, okay, you woman. Have you ever been propositioned for anal sex? Hell no. Hell no. Well, that is a good thing. Because if a dude propositions you for anal sex, he is gay. He is fucking gay. High five, bro. Okay. Because why would you pass up a perfectly beautiful koi, cute vagina, for an asshole? Why? Why would you do that? Oh, it's tighter. Oh, it's the experience. Oh, it's, 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 it's something different. No, it's not. It's fucking gay. If there were something else, like if there were a, if there was something else that gay guys had that other people, if there were like something like attached to my thigh, like if there were like a fucking gay pocket that I could use as opposed to the anus. Dirt road. Dirt road. Good job. Gay pocket. <laughs> Bad how much time do I have? Uh, like 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay, I can finish this up. Um, <laughs> meet me in the bathroom later. Um, so, so uh, one of my friends recently, um, he called me, we were in the bar and I came out to him and he was like, um, you fucking faggot, go take it up the ass. And I was like, wow, I was like, that's, that's, that really hurts. Um, mostly him because I'm six foot five, 270 pounds. 
<laughs> and I fucked him up. Um, but no, I took him outside and I was like, let me explain to him that not all gay guys say that the ass. Um, then I raped him. <laughs> but no, 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 no. It, it wasn't like legitimate rape. It was, I mean, and, okay, and besides, he was kind of, he was dressed slutty. He had on skinny jeans. <laughs> Thanks, this has been my time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tony Chapman, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around, guys. We still got a little bit of the show left. Uh, if you're, like, try to keep your table talk to a minimum, uh, and you the reason you want to do that is because you definitely want to hear your next comic. She's a previous winner of the Clash of the Comics at the Richmond Funny Bone. Ladies and gentlemen, Rukmani Ramachandran. Uh, your next comic, we keep the show rolling, right safe, sir. Uh, your next comic, uh, regular at the Richmond Funny Bone, really funny dude. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Israel. Well, call me. Damn, tell us love. That's what I like to hear. Shit. I tell you, man, I work with school kids all the time, man. Last week was the first week of school, and I'm telling you, these kids were any fucking thing to school. Do, do, do you realize what the fuck these kids are wearing? Like, I'm sorry, if you are big, certain colors you cannot fucking wear. I mean, this one girl had this bright ass neon shit on, a red top and shit. Bitch, like a pack of Skittles. I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, damn, did your mama let you come out the house looking like a damn young ass whore and you took fruity missions too? Shit. That's a damn shame. You know what I'm saying? But uh other week though, I kept my daughter for a week, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to do the right thing, be a good dad and shit like that. But you know, I realized I love her, but she got some problems, man. At three years old, she got some damn problems and shit. You know, because if you ever had a three-year-old, you know, spend a week with three-year-old, you know those little things, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, I'm trying to get her sleeping habits down. She always kicking me in the ball, so I had to throw her against another wall and shit, so she'd calm down. That's mean, but if you have a kid, you understand what I'm saying. You have to throw your kids against the wall a couple times. Just wake them up, let them realize what's going on. But the worst part about keeping my daughter was, you know what I'm saying? A potty training, because she just started potty training and shit. And so she wipes from back to front. I'm trying to teach her wipe from front to back. I said, baby, you don't bring the dirt to the cooter, you bring the shit back the other way. You know what I'm saying? You gotta wipe, bam, 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 like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't wipe to the front. You don't dirty that shit up. Then you want them crying and talking about you itching and shit. Nah, I don't feel like they with that shit all night. You know, y'all don't get that joke, but y'all have three old girls, you'll get that joke one day. <laughs> one day you'll be like, shit, them motherfuckers probably you gotta wipe from back to front. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it, it's a lot of shit on my mind sometimes. Cause like I said, I work with the uh, kids. You know, I don't do teaching. I, I'm a janitor. So I clean a lot of shit. And I give me time to think when I'm cleaning the toilet sometimes. <laughs> and when you clean the toilet, you think of a lot of shit, literally. I mean, you clean the shit so you think of shit. So, you know, I'm sitting there thinking like, he, he, you know what I'm saying? These, these kids nowadays, you know, my fucking nerves and shit now. And, and, and they're like, Issa, what you gonna do one day if a kid come up to you and fuck you up? I said, I'm gonna take that room and weigh your ass out. That's what the fuck I'm gonna do. <laughs> shit, take that trash man and try to choke the shit out of you. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I really take a trash man and choke the shit out of your kid. I will, I will do that shit. Fuck the job. I'm not letting a 15 year old whip my ass. I mean, who wants to live with that shit? And that shit be all on Facebook and shit. Like, you know, Facebook, Facebook, any fucking thing nowadays. You know, I be in a gotcha magazine because I fucked a little kid up and shit like that. <laughs> you know, that's, that's some bullshit. But, you know, one thing I like about white people, though, you, know, you guys know how to do that, you know, insanity shit after you kill like 15 people. I love that shit. I mean, I, I, I mean, you guys have perfected that shit, like the Colorado shit. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about it when I'm cleaning my toilets, right? I'm cleaning my toilets, I'm thinking like, shit, this is some deep shit. This motherfucker didn't walk in the, in the room looking like Batman, just all 15 motherfuckers for no reason, I mean, shit. You know what I'm saying? You could have you did that shit, you know what I'm saying, any other time. You know, why couldn't you do that shit at the Denny's or some shit like that? You know, you know, motherfuckers, they don't give a damn shit. You eating Denny's late at, late at night, you deserve to get shot. That's some bullshit ass food you eat. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking like, damn. Cause I'm thinking like, I couldn't get away with that shit. Like, my black ass that shot 15 of y'all, they will keep my black ass during Black History Month shit. <laughs> nigga, I, they, nigga, they kill me on Martin Luther King's birthday like shit. We have a dream, yeah, we have a dream. Sit your black ass in this shit. We better fry you like a piece of bacon right now. <laughs> shit, I mean, the other day, um, was it Monday? Yeah, Monday. I went to go get blood and shit, you know. And fellas, we, we do things to impress a girl sometimes. You know, don't we? We do, do simple, simple shit to impress a girl. Like, the girl that was taking my blood was kind of fine, right? But it was only one problem. You know, I had a lot of gas. 
sitting in that chair for like a half hour getting blood. So I'm, I'm clenching my ass cheeks together so tight, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to fart in front of this pretty girl. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that shit. Because if she was an ugly bitch, I would have fart in front of her. You know what I'm saying? I ain't lying. And if it was ugly, I would have fart. I would let that shit fly in her fucking mouth. I ain't lying. Because you know, fellas, you know, it's different rules when a pretty woman versus an ugly woman. If it's pretty, you'll do anything, you know what I'm saying? You'll leap yeah. across a door, or you'll rub a back, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you haven't even met the bitch before, but you'll stroke her hair for some reason, whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you're an ugly bitch, you can't have a bad personality. You can't be mean. You can't just say, oh, now speak to me. Bitch, you ugly. Somebody needs to speak to your ass, shit. Agreed. Agreed. I know, right? Shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Go, go home and dish with some vinegar and shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And that's the thing, I mean, I looked at, looked at the uh, box one day and said, uh, dish, you know, vinegar and shit. I'm like, damn, bitch, are you marinating the pussy or something? What the fuck you doing? <laughs> you got vinegar and shit, that's bad. You know what I'm saying? That's terrible. But, uh, you know, I'm just bullshitting up here for a little bit right now. Um, <laughs> shit, my name is Israel. Y'all good night. Damn. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back to the stage. Jesse Thomas, a.k.a. J.J. JJ, but not the dude from Good Times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, open up that that back door again because I wanted everybody to know about your next comic. Uh, this guy, really funny dude. Everybody say bye to Nick Cantone, everybody. Yeah. everybody. Everybody, wish him well on his trip to New York. Have a good night, yeah. sir. Right, say. Uh, you're Thank you.